Chapter 35 is an introduction to plants. We're going to start with botany. And uh, so we're going to start with an introduction to plants today. Our plants are like any other organism. They have organs made of tissues, made of cells. So the same kind of structural uh, system that we have. Okay. The What I mean by that, we as in animals, the cell... Gonna work. The cell tissue organ idea is the same for plants as with animals. Um, so we're going to talk about a term called morphology. Okay, morphology means um, basically body. If we're talking about morphology right here on the arrow, body plan. Basic body plan is morphology. So uh, there are three organs. There's actually four root stems and leaves. And of course, flowers, which we'll actually talk about at a later time. Okay? And they call this a root system and a shoot system. We'll explain that in a second, too. Okay, here's the idea then is that you have a plant, most people recognize a plant, the root system down here, and a system of shoots with a main shoot, and we call axillary shoots or offshoots of that same main vein, main shoot. Okay, so uh, there are three functions of roots. We're going to talk about each organ in a second. There are three functions of roots. Anchor the plant, absorb minerals and water, and store nutrients. And then some examples uh, quickly. Uh, well, again, in most plants, absorption of water and minerals occurs near the root tips. And we'll talk about this more in chapter 39. Okay? Because roots have root hairs that increase the surface area of the roots. And so if we take a look at this, here's a growing, uh, here's the seed. It just sprouted, and you can see this big section of root hairs there that are growing. Here are some examples of roots. We have corn here with prop roots that keep it off the ground. You have storage roots. We have aerial roots, which is this is kind of a cool picture. Buttress roots, which are in some plants that are really thick roots that are above the ground to make it help it stay up. And nematophores, which are actually roots that poke up above the water to get oxygen. Stems. Uh, stems are basically the place where you have branches, right? So a stem is an organ that has nodes. Nodes have leaves attached, okay, and sometimes more stems. Okay, and then there's a term called internodes, which means between nodes, essentially. Uh, on a stem, there are two kinds of buds. Here's a stem. There's a bud at the tip called the terminal bud. And we'll talk about that again a little later. And then there are buds down the sides called axillary buds. This is where you get branches. Okay? Terminal bud is in charge of growth. Up. Axillary buds in charge of growth out. Uh, there are modified stems. Uh, some plants like this strawberry have stems that go out along the ground. Those are called stolons. You aren't going to need to remember these names. Just know the modified stem. An onion is actually a stem. The stem of the onion is down here. The leaves of the onion are up here, and the roots come off the bottom. Uh, you have tubers, like potatoes, where the roots actually grow off the potato itself. That's a storage stem. And then things called rhizomes, where the stem gives rise to uh, other plants that pop up off of it. The leaves, we're going to look at leaves in lab in some detail, but this is where photosynthesis happens. And I'm going to assume you already know that. Uh, generally, leaves consist of the blade and a petiole. And just for terminology's sake, here's a leaf, that's the petiole. Okay, here's the blade of the leaf, and so on. There are two major 
Well, if we're talking about plants, we are talking about things called angiosperms. Angiosperms, remember, are flowering plants. There are gymnosperms, which are uh, non-flowering plants like pines. Okay, so we have kingdom plantae and then uh, phylum such as angiospermae and gymnospermae. And then one, two classes of angiosperm are monocots and dicots. Okay, and so we're going to, every once in a while, we'll take a look at the difference between the classes monocots and dicots. Monocots have parallel veins. It means their veins run parallel to the surface of the leaf, the edge of the leaf. Dicots have branching veins, a main vein surrounded by other branching veins. So a lot of times people use how a leaf looks as the criterion. Okay, here's a dicot leaf, branching veins. Here's a dicot leaf, but it's called a compound leaf because it has many leaflets. Doubly compound, these aren't that important for you to know. Modified leaves. Okay, some plants, these are actually leaves of an ivy. Okay, they produce tendrils. They're actually leaves that grow out. Modified leaves. Spines are modified leaves on a cactus. Storage leaves, such as in this plant, that produces these really thick leaves to store water and other nutrients in. Bracts. This is a poinsettia. Poinsettia, these are modified leaves. These are the flowers. Some flowers have very small bracts. Poinsettias have very large bracts. They've been, they produce these big red leaves, actually, that go around. A lot of people think these are the flowers, but they're not. And then uh, reproductive leaves that produce reproductive structures on them. Ferns do this, too. So in plants, besides organ systems, there are three tissue systems. Dermal, and you know, with like epidermis, kind of skin, vascular, vessels, and then everything else called ground tissue. And we're going to just briefly skim these. We're going to look at these in some detail later. Okay, so if you look at a cross-section of a leaf, for example, it has dermal tissue on the outside, vascular tissue in sections in the middle, and then ground tissue is the rest. Here's a stem. Same idea. Okay? In non-woody plants, the dermal tissue is just the epidermis. In woody plants, you'll see a term called periderm. Okay? Periderm is kind of a synonym for bark. Vascular tissues are xylem and phloem. We're going to talk more about xylem and phloem in chapter 39. Okay, but those are the vessels of a plant, xylem and phloem. Uh, xylem conveys water up. Phloem transports nutrients from where they are made to where they are needed, generally down the plant, because usually they're made in the leaves. And, of course, ground tissue we've already mentioned. Ground tissue includes the different kinds of cells, and you're only going to need to recognize the names of these cells. Okay? And remember, in any multicellular organism, cells are specialized to do different things. Okay? They're specialized in structure and function. You're not going to have to memorize the names of these, but you have to recognize them. If you see the term parenchyma, cholenchyma, sclerenchyma, these are plant cells, types of plant cells, okay? And there's a slide in your book. There's a picture in your book of this, this picture, that talks about parenchyma cells, cholenchyma cells, and sclerenchyma cells. Sclerenchyma, you know, you've, you've eaten a pear, and pear has those little hard kernels in it. Those are sclerenchyma that produce sclerids, okay? Sclerenchyma cells help produce fibers that give it some structure, the plant some structure. Parenchyma cells, lots of chloroplasts. Cholenchyma cells, kind of like a connective tissue in plants. Next term is meristem. 
okay? The term meristem. Meristems are where mitosis happens in plants. Apical, this term means top or peak. Apical meristems are located at the tips, okay? Apical meristems are responsible for primary growth. Primary growth is the growth of a plant upward. Pretty much this chapter is a lot of terms. Lateral meristems are in the sides of a plant. So here's a plant, here's a stem. <laughs> this isn't very good drawing. Lateral meristems are located in the sides of a plant. They make the plant thicker. Apical meristem is at the top of a plant. They will make, or at the top of a shoot, they will make it longer. Okay? So lateral meristems are in charge of secondary growth, which is thickness. So primary growth up, secondary growth out. Two kinds of lateral meristems. If you see the term cambium, vascular, and cork cambium, these are the meristems that are in charge of this. Cork cambium, you can see this right in it, is in charge of making the bark. Bark, okay, because cork is a wood. That should help you remember that. So, a uh, summary of this is that in a root or in a, tr in a plant, you have meristems, apical meristems that are responsible for growth up and out. Lateral meristems, vascular and cork cambium, add thickness. So the rings of a tree, for example, are made by vascular cambium. In a stem, for example, you'll have the epidermis on the outside, you'll have xylem and phloem on the inside, and then more xylem and phloem get laid down by the vascular cambium. In woody plants, this occurs at the same time. A plant grows up and out at the same time. So again, primary growth lengthens roots and shoots by apical meristems. And just a quick showing of this, onion root tip. The apical meristem is here. Cell division is happening all around it. Okay? In a stem, or this is a section of a root, okay? Um, you see that, again, they're showing you the three kinds of tissue, again, as review. And then uh, growth can happen outward in a root because it's got to get thicker. The ends are getting longer, but the, root, the sides are getting thicker. Oops, sorry about that. So we don't need to know this. Here is an apical meristem in a leaf, okay, with a bud right here. This is where mitosis is happening fast and producing growth up. Here is a look at the difference between two, a monocot stem and a dicot stem. Notice in the dicot stem, the sunflower, okay, you get this ring of xylem and phloem. This stuff in the middle is called the pith. These are dead xylem cells, but xylem can still transport water up. Here is a uh, monocot stem and the vascular bundles where the xylem and phloem are scattered throughout. Rather than being a ring, they're scattered around. This slide shows secondary growth in a stem. As a stem grows year by year, you see these, we're going to look at some winter twigs. You'll see these nodes. This is one year's growth and then it stopped, and then the next year's growth and then it stopped. That's primary. Secondary growth occurs with the vascular cambium layer here. Okay, now look at the difference here. Here's the same vascular cambium layer, but it's already laid down an extra layer the second year. You have an extra layer of what's called secondary xylem and secondary phloem. Phloem on the outside 
xylem on the inside. And so in the third year, you have another layer of here's the vascular cambium again. It's laying down, here's last year's growth. Now it's laying down another year of secondary xylem and another year of secondary phloem. Here is the cork cambium layer, sorry, cork cambium layer laying down bark. Okay, and so every year as the plant grows, this is in the first year of the cycle, this one's in the second year of the cycle, this node's in the third year of the cycle. So if you look at a tree then, you see these growth rings, right? Every year, this is a new layer of secondary xylem that's been laid down, and the tree gets wider. These xylem, remember, because you have to transport so much water up the tree, okay? You have to, the bigger a tree gets, the more water you need, the more xylem you need. Okay, so this is a three-year-old stem. One, two, three rings. This is just a description of the vascular cambium. It's one cell thick, and then meristematic means they do mitosis. And then you don't really need to know the second part of that. And then as the heartwood, as a tree or woody shrub ages, the older layers of sec secondary xylem, the heartwood, no longer transport water and nutrients. The outer layers, known as sapwood, still transport minerals. So in the very center, you're not getting any water transported. You can cut in and find the sap, right? The wood that's all green, and that's where water and nutrients are transported up a plant. So, and one more time then, the cork cambium gives rise to periderm or bark. And that is pretty much it for chapter 35. Lots of terminology this time.